Hey everyone, this is Yuri from Mercy Earth and uh, we are here for the next update for our coral project in Nusa Penida. First of all, before we start, I would like to say thank you so much for everyone's support and enthusiasm on this project. YouTube viewers and Mercy Earth members, um, thank you so much. And we've been, um, have many questions about the use of zip ties and also the, the steel bar that we are using whether it's going to rust at some point or they will last. So in this vlog, we will, I will try to answer all of it to clear up the, um, our uh, methodology, why we use the zip ties and what could we improve. So I think everyone's uh, raised a valid uh, concern there about the zip, uh, the use of plastic in our coral restoration project. And we also consider that even in the very early stage of this uh, project. So we are looking, uh, keep trying to look for uh, different um, materials for tying the corals. And also uh, we are experimenting ourselves to see what's best. Um, but for now, as, as our research go, like um, based on the current study and literature, the use of zip ties is still widely used in any coral restorations project uh, in Indonesia as well. So I think at this uh, point on our project, we try to minimize it. And as we go trying to developing um, another materials that still that works the same, at least in terms of survival rate. The, the zip ties that we use on each um, coral fragment, we usually use one. We want to use only one to minimize the use of zip ties, but sometimes the coral fragment uh, requires two of those to securely attach. So, and to minimize the zip ties, we cut the remaining um, part of the zip tie. So we will try to use the most efficient way to use it underwater to use it for this uh, this project so we end up actually with um, many zip ties waste that i've been um, collecting at some point and we've been uh, speaking also to the community here in lembongan so right now i'm at the lembongan recycling center so this is where we put our uh, zip ties waste after the coral restorations. So once we, we cut it out, collect them together like this, this much. It's actually a lot, quite a lot. So since the beginning of the project, I keep everything, everything uh, together. And now we are going to, now that we have a lot already, we are going to give them to Lembongan uh, Recycling Center to for them to recycle. Jadi nanti itu zip ties-nya di apain prosesnya itu, Mbak? Oh, kita giling, kita pilah satu persatu nanti. Karena jenis plastik kan ada 42 jenis. Oh. Kita pilah sesuai jenisnya, kita giling satu-satu. Oh, setelah digiling? Setelah prosesnya? Kita eh, jemur. Kalau sudah jadi seperti beras baru kita kirim ke pabrik lagi. Oh, iya yeah, iya. Yeah. Berarti masih disuplai ke pabrik ya? Iya, yeah, karena Terus di sampai di sana Oh, di sana bisa dibikin untuk tali rahasia. Oh, diproses lagi, ya, diproses di, ulang. So all the plastic waste from our project already left there with Lembongan Recycling Center, and as the lady explained, they will first uh, sort the type of the plastic first, and then after that they will shred it into smaller, uh, like a pallet, like a smaller bit and pressed and then after that they will send it back to uh, they they have uh, partners who will use it as a uh, uh, raw material again like to make a plastic um, rope and or remodel it into some furniture so i hope that's answer a little bit um about uh, our decision to start using the zip ties in the first place. And yeah, we would like to hear your thought. Um, 
because we are we are going to keep um, doing an experiment trying to replace it it would be cool actually to have uh, plastic free in our project like in our core restoration project so yeah um, if you have any more ideas about what should we um, experiment like what materials that we could we could try uh, please uh, let us know write in the, in the comments and and yeah we'll we'll see what we can do hello good morning morning good morning guys hi morning morning hello so today we are going to do an experiment with different method on tying the corals so instead of only using cable ties we are going to tr compare with the use of a cooking twine this is a cotton material used for tying the meat and also another organic material with the ham rope so we want to compare this tree and hopefully in the next three months we will have we will have the uh, results and hopefully we can replace the use of zip ties with one of these materials so the experiment will be applied to 25 uh, structures and each of the structures will be um, will be applied with three different uh, tying methods with zip ties, with hemp rope and also with the cotton thread or the cooking twine. We will separate the 25 uh, structures in the open area so we can monitor it um, the same way over time and hopefully after three months or six months we will have the results already. I would like to talk more about the, the phase one of our tying experiments because the result is so far of course the zip ties have the most uh, survival rate compared to hemp rope and cotton twine and as they progress we're going to keep monitoring uh, monitor them and another month to see whether are they going to finally attach by themselves or not going to attach? And then we can draw uh, conclusions from there. One of the YouTube comments uh, suggests that we use stainless steel uh, zip ties. And I think it's a really good idea. Ever since uh, I read that comment, we ordered the stainless steel zip ties uh, right away. And last week we got the materials and today we have the chance to actually try it out underwater we found that for attaching coral fragments the stainless steel uh, zip ties is very difficult it's only because we need to pull it really hard and we need extra tools for it we need to use um, a pliers and with corals it's difficult not to break the corals in the process of tightening the zip ties but luckily for to use it to connect the structures with each other the stainless steel uh, materials is quite um, efficient it will it's take a l more power to make it uh, tight enough so it's not moving so the structure is not moving but in the end it actually can hold the structure together so I think I think we can we can immediately uh, immediately use it uh, moving forward for for our restoration sites to connect structures with each other but for coral we still need to test it like we still need to we, we're still going to do an experiment uh, with it and now jumps on to the second point which is the use of the steel bar 
there is a concern about how the iron will um, pollute the water and also how is the corrosion happen and the rust and what is affecting the the corals to minimize the corrosion or rust the steel bar that we use is coated with the resin and the coral sand right so as we deploy the structures eventually naturally the coralline algae will also cover on top of the structures so after we we use the resins there will be another layer of coralline algae which is more natural and and completely cover the structures so that would minimize the iron leaching by the because of the corrosion because based on what we observe after on our trial sites it, they actually last until now and the current algae already start to covering the structures so yeah so this structures is designed to last um, in a very long time and then at some point the coral will grow over it and then they will just become part of the the skeleton under it and one of also our uh, reasons of using uh, the, the structure the metal structures is compared to the concrete for example the concrete uh, structure would be heavier to transport to our project site because the project sites can only accessible by boat so we figure the metal structure is the best ideal um, uh, way because it's modular so we can bring um, slowly slowly every day moving around 30 or 35 every day and then we deployed it and then it will give also manageable uh, monitoring basically over time and also we have uh, six rubble areas in total we have five more to go with um, various uh, sizes so this rubble area that will create the 0 0.9 hectares uh, eventually right like we when we arrange so in this rubble patches we're gonna we actually have the space and also the resources to actually uh, improving on our way of coral restoration for example maybe we will with the experiment uh, that we are uh, doing now hopefully we will find a replacement of plastic zip ties or maybe sometime in the future we will come up with a different um, way to create substrate or how to stabilize the, the rubble that will be something that i will look forward to, to keep improving on on how we do the coral restorations so thank you so much for everyone's support and enthusiasm on this project thank you for following our progress on this uh, channel and also in our main channel mossy earth and if you are a mossy earth member your direct impact is actually make this project happen. And if you're not a Mossy Earth member and you want to give um, direct contribution on this project, please consider becoming Mossy Earth member at mossyearth.earth. Until next time, guys. Cheers.